Hi everybody, happy Monday. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com and this is 2022 Topps Chrome Ben Baller Baseball. 12 box, pick your team at number six. All card ship, really nice stuff. A lot of fun parallels, fun looking set. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Appreciate it, we sold this out straight up, no filler. We got Ryan with Last Spot Mojo and the Nationals. This is our last case. We don't have any more to post after this. Um, my guess is we'll be, we have some more on the way. But for now, no more to repost, so just keep an eye on, out on jazbeescasebreaks.com for its return. Mostly parallel hunting, but uh, I think each case generally has some autographs. I don't think they're super common though. Parallels are the big hunt here. Ben Baller, some of you may know as the uh, as a, a jeweler to the stars, one of the one of the more famous jeweler to the stars. He's in like kind of had a he's done a lot of things actually, but mostly some music production work. Kind of well-known in those circles and the custom jewelry circles. And I guess he's pretty good at amateur golf. He's been playing some pro-ams and stuff, too. All right, here we go. Got a Spencer Torkelson die cut. These are pretty cool. It's a good question, Joe. Hopefully as many as possible. But I, I really have no idea. Seven out of 99, Chris Parent and the Giants. And there's an out of five, Alexander Wells. Nice, train whistle right out of the first box, out of fives and under. That's for Kyle and the O's. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Got a Bryce Harper die cut, 20 out of 50. It's Ryan, uh, no, check that. Sorry, that was Ryan in the National. He hasn't been a National in a while. Uh, Daniel in the Phillies.
Kyle Lewis for the Mariners. Daniel to 75. Jordan Alvarez to 99. Jorge Soler to 50. All right. Box one in the books. Jorge Soler for Justin and the Braves. Jordan will go to Mark S. and the Astros. All right. But that out of five, Alexander Wells for the O's. Not a bad start. Box two. Yeah, as for as for that's I mean Joe, that, that that's gonna be 2020, 2021 the cup hockey, I wanna say. So I'll just be happy to get to get that product in. We've been waiting for it for a long time. Love the cup. I'll be grateful for one case. But it's one of those things where it's just like we just tell we just tell our, our, our people like hey as much as possible how much can you give us <laughs> so we'll see. It's been, it's actually, yeah, it's been actually so long since we've seen the cup. Like, I don't remember how many cases we usually get in a, in a normal year. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to think back to a normal year for the cup. Uh, you might be able to look back to our 2019-2020 Cup Hockey videos and see how many breaks we did the new release day. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know how things have changed for, uh, for Upper Deck, how many they're actually printing in a post-pandemic world. So, no idea. My, my guess is at least two cases. <laughs> One for uh, one for personal breaks on Instagram at Jaspie's Breaks on IG, and then one for YouTube right here, JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Would love to see more though. Tristan McKenzie to seventy-five. You know, Upper Deck is actually located just just south of us, North County, San Diego. I think they're in Carlsbad. It was Joe Adele to 75 and Brandon Lau to 50. Suppose we can just drive down there. Just knock on the door and just be like, guys, what's happening here? How can we help? It's Jesse Winker to 99. Yeah, with any other product, that sounds about right. Any other high-end product like that, five or six cases, a few picker team cases, and a couple reserved for Instagram. But, I mean, it's, it's just been so long for, for that cup hockey. I'm just like... I'll just be happy to get anything. There's Mike Moustakis, Moose to 15 for the Reds. That'll be for Steve. Got Harrison Bader to 99. That's for Stephen Carney and the Cardinals. Nice photo of him there. And we've got a Hunter Green die cut. Box three. Okay. 
Yeah, that'll be that'll be kind of hilarious. Redemptions could be already expired in the cup hockey, if any. Hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, they're printing those last, so so they can get a more accurate expiration date on it. Or maybe there won't be in any. I mean, after all this time, maybe they shouldn't have redemptions. Is that this week? Yeah, the the blowout new release calendar saying it's on the twenty fourth. That's Thursday. <laughs> I don't know, Joe. I, I wouldn't put it past a manufacturer. Kind of forget that part and be like, oh right. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we printed those redemptions first, like years ago, and then forgot to update that. 24th 23rd is the is when is what the calendar which is a Thursday which is kind of a weird release day No is that right the cup redemption will never expire because they'll never come in just like the cup Well hey listen it's slated, it's, the calendar says the 23rd. If it was pushed back, like, I feel like it's happening, because if it was pushed back, we probably would have, probably would have gotten that notice, like, a week or two ago. I mean, probably would have known by now. Oh, is that right? Jason saying, Jason Jesse saying that something about Upper Deck not wanting to do a typical Friday release anymore. It's not a bad idea. Everyone else says Wednesdays, Fridays. You know, Upper Deck could own, own their own day. Own, own the hobby news cycle of the day. They, they take control of that Thursday. There's Juan Soto to 50. And a Bobby Witt Jr. riding low insert. That'll be for Mark B. and the Royals. Kind of like this insert set. And Ryan with the uh, with the Nationals edition of Juan Soto. Witt Merrifield, thirty nine out of ninety nine Royals. That'll be for Mark B. And a blue Manny Machado to 75. Gave his team an ultimatum. They made him an offer, and then he's like, eh. Well, I think I'll opt out at the end of the season. Spencer Torkelson, green. 1999 prints in that 1987 wood border design here. I like it. Yeah, I do too. We do have more of that Series 1 on the website, jaspiescasebreaks.com if we want to run that. And Wander Franco, rookie card. Let's look for parallels of this guy. Tampa Bay, Mark. Brandon Belt for the Giants, Chris Parent. You know, I was when I when I did my first case of that series one, when a Julio Rodriguez die cut for Seattle, D'Lo, Daniel, I was hoping that it wouldn't just be aces. Like I, I thought we were going to be able to make a poker hand out of it or something like that. Alas, no, they did not lean into the playing card theme. It's Miguel Cabrera to seventy five. Well, four of a kind aces, those aren't bad. All right, another box.
if you got if you got to redesign Topps Chrome Baseball, how would you do it? Ben Baller, a jeweler to the stars, Gilo. Music producer. Got discovered by Dr. Dre in the early 90s as well. I'm trying to think what I would uh I'm trying to think what I would do. be interesting to see the stats of how many cards I top load a year. Jeez. I don't know. Like if, if, if someone said, if someone said, hey, let's do, instead of Topps Chrome Ben Baller, let's do Topps Chrome JC, Joe Christian. Like, I don't know. What would you do with it? I think how many cards do I take? It must be tens of thousands, right? You think I top load 50, 100,000 cards a year maybe? How many breaks do I, do I average a day? How many cards am I top loading in each of those breaks? Chilo Gabe would do a top scroll Pokemon? I would say this is a variation of Topps Chrome because I think the, I think for the most part, is the photography the same? Maybe there's different photography, but I think like the checklist is the same. I don't think that changes that much. That's right. Yeah, I mean, if if we're top loading fifty, if I'm individually top loading fifty thousand cards a year. Like think about my groups like Leighton as well. I mean, how many are they? How many are they top loading? I mean, their team top loading on a year, hundreds of thousands. Keeping those top loader companies in business. There's Matt, uh, Manny Machado at 25, Steve Locke and the Padres. I do not collect, I think this, being able to do this every day scratches the edge. So Gabe's uh, Topps Chrome, Topps Chrome Pokemon. Maybe a, a red Charizard Otani to five. <laughs> That'd be kind of hilarious. Aaron Judge going to Ed and the Yankees. So maybe like down there would just be like Pokemon instead of the team logo, perhaps. Gavin Sheets to 99, Daniel and the White Sox. I feel like there's some licensing issues there that probably doesn't let that happen. Tatis Jr. die cut. Corey Seager to 50. Bobby Wood Jr. in that 1987 design. That's for the Royals. That'll be for Mark B. And then there's Shane B. to 75 for Daniel and the Guardians. Another box.
I, yeah, I, I do. I do collect uh, postcards. I don't know if I'd collect Chrome postcards. You would say keep going with Steve Aoki cards. I'm surprised they did a second year of, I, I, I guess, 2021 Ben Baller must have done really well if they invited him back to do a second year. Is it third year already? Did they do a 2020? I don't remember that one. I know 20 last year's has the are in the blue packs, right? This year's in the black packs. No, not the stamps. I mean, this stamp helps if I'm like mailing a postcard to myself, or if, my, if, my, if some friends are traveling, I'll say, "Hey, if you want to, if you're able to send me a postcard from some international location here, and that's cool." Apparently, that's a. I mean, I, there was a, a one point in time where that that would have been an easy task, but now it's like a it's like an actual. It's actually hard. Topps Chrome Banksy would be kind of cool, Mike Tower. And that, that might be out of, uh, I mean, how much would those boxes be? It'd be pretty pricey, I would think. Matt Olson to 99 and Cole Calhoun to 50 and Juan Soto to 99. Eli Morgan to 99, Sonny Gray to 75. Are you able to take a photo and print to postcard sock? So you can send a postcard with a photo you took. Yes, you can. I've done that before. Um, maybe not to postcard stock. We can you can take a photo, get it developed, get a standard three by five photo, and you can put a stamp on the back of it and send it. Tyler Gilbert, ten out of ten. Kevin with the Diamondbacks. I have no idea. Hundreds of postcards? I was thinking someday maybe a postcard book could be in the works. I haven't worked on that project in a while, though. But it just says long lost paper ephemera. Is there a Banksy exhibit in Philly right now? Have we found out who Banksy is? Has anyone uncovered his identity? Also, is, is there only one Banksy? Could there be multiple Banksy? Like the Blue Man Group and their understudies? Topps Chrome BK Whopper Edition? That'd be pretty cool. Get some Whopper Redemptions. At BK, have it your way.
Hmm. Tyler Scott did a collaboration with McDonald's. And it's a 36 inch body pillow that looks like a McNugget. Is it the one that looks like the United States? That nugget? Is it that shape? There's an Otani die cut for the angel. That'll be for Mark. Toss Chrome Breaker Editions. How would that work? All right, what are you thinking on that, Gabe? Like. A bunch of different breakers have different cards of themselves in it. Didn't a company ever try to push really random card sets? Random as in how? I mean, I feel like there are card companies, like some independent card companies out there that'll like manufacture some really weird stuff. Like I think there's a company that has like the, I think Futera maybe has like a cricket license or something random like that. Tristan McKenzie to 25. I did not Danny. I completely forgot, but next box I will. It's Joey Votto to 75. It's Kyle Hendricks to 99. Torkelson. So Danny had a weird issue, I think, on the uh, group breaking side of things, where where he had one of those die cuts, the Wander Franco die cut. That was like ten, Danny, or five, maybe. maybe. And um, and what had happened was, what happened was. The die cut, I guess while this, this wrapping process was happening and chunk, right, they, they seal that right there, the die cut must have slid up to the top. It was the 10. So the point of the die cut must have slid to the top and then it went chunk. And so essentially crimping the top of the, uh, the die cut. And so he contacted Tops and Usually, like for damaged cards that are that that they'll they'll be willing to replace, especially like a higher end card like that. Usually, I, we can just send them, send you the box and one of these wrappers, and they'll and then you know, and then you just kind of go from there. But some representative emailed Danny back and was like, and um. And was like, uh, we need the box and every pack in the box. Isn't that random? It's the first time I've ever, ever heard that. Oh, the Zero, we know the guys at Zero Cool. We actually, we've actually sold some, uh, some Zero Cool uh, jackass stuff right out of the shop. We did a fun little video with, for them too. Yeah, they've 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 put they've put out some uh, they've put out some pretty interesting stuff. So hopefully they can kind of fill 
that's sort of niche because sort of high-end non-sport type stuff with with different and unique collaborations I think could be a market that could be uh, worth exploring for sure. Painter's tape on here, this this will come off pretty easily without sticking. Good luck. All right, onwards. We got Zach Pop to 75. That'll be for Chris Parent and the Marlins. Max Muncy to 50. That's for Daniel and the Dodgers. Jarrett Kalanick, Mookie Betts die cut. Daniel with the Mariners. And the rare autograph, Mackenzie Gore. It's a nice one too. Rookie auto for the Padres. I'll go to Steve Locke. It's part of that big uh, Juan Soto deal. Three out of 50. Right, he's with the Nats now, I think. Him and C.J. Abrams, among others. This is Brian Dela Cruz, 10 out of 10. Chris Parent with the fish. Another box down, some more boxes to go. I'm on MLB.com. Let's see what kind of see what kind of headlines we got there. Inseparable Goldie and Arenado push each other to improve. Marlins number one prospect throws heat in first live BP. Otani's agent on contract talk one day at a time. Could Judge possibly match 62? We'll see. What does the future hold? For Machado and the Padres. Two surgeries later, Anthony Rendon, finally healthy. Now, apparently, Yelich, Christian Yelich went off the grid to recharge for 2023. And apparently, uh, Jason Hayward, his new swing, 
is the early talk of Dodgers camp. Chase Neary has enjoyed plenty of success during his 13-year big league career, made an all-star team, won a handful of gold gloves, integral part of the Cubs' 2016 World Series team. Last season, however, Howard experienced some of the worst struggles at this plate when he hit 204 with one homer and 137 at-bats and was striking out at 21.2%, his highest of any season since 2012. Given those struggles, the Cubs decided Hayward wasn't going to finish the season with the team in order to give the organization's younger players an opportunity. Hayward's only 33 years old. I thought he was much older, but... Blah, 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 blah. Didn't know if anybody would... Uh, would, re would even sign him at all. But the Dodgers do have a... Yeah, but Los Angeles' track record of reviving careers was ultimately the biggest appeal for Jason Hayward. I wasn't expecting changes. I think start from scratch, which is nice. But then, so blah blah blah. blah. Decided the swing needed a major overhaul. Wow. Over the years, Hayward preferred to keep his hands closer to his body, but this spring has kept his hands higher and more compact. Something like that. We'll see if that works out. Yeah, Angels gave Anthony Rendon crazy money. I think they gave him, uh, they're paying him like $40 million a year or something like that. They gave him seven years, $245 million. Uh, average out to be $35 million a year. That's the average annual value. That's Joe Adele to 50. Lars Newtbar to 99 for the Cardinals. Got a Wander Franco right and low insert. That'll be for Mark S. and the Rays. Newt Bar goes to Stephen C. Angels, Mark S. You know, we were just looking at that yesterday. It's worth looking up again. So they signed him in 2020. So his first season was 20, which, which was the pandemic shortened season. I think he played most of those games, 52 games. In like a 60 some odd season, 60 some odd game season. Hey, no worries, Danny. Good luck with the, uh, with the replacement. I hope, that, I hope you get something nice. But then 2021 only played 58 games. 2022 played even less, 47 games. All for an average of $35 million a year. There's Juan Soto to 75 For the Nationals, that'll be for Ryan. And another autograph. C.J. Abrams, another Padre for Steve Locke. You got Mackenzie Gore earlier. It was part of the Juan Soto trade. And C.J. Abrams. 50. I think there's there are some other invol others involved, but those are the main guys. Well, that's numbered. I knew that looked a little different. That's to 99. Mike Trout, Mark S.
Jake Myers, 88 out of 99 for Mark S. and the Astros. The Beebs, Shane Bieber to 25 for D'Lo and the Guardians. So, rough times for Anthony Rendon. The Angels just seem, either they just have bad luck, or, or they're just not signing the right long-term free agent. I guess Trout, no, but Trout was, was more of a extension, if anything. But the free agents they've signed from other teams, they've just, they've just been unlucky. Josh Hamilton, Albert Pujols, Anthony Rendon. Those are some of your more recent, recent sort of misfires. But when healthy, in that 2019 season, it's an all-star, finished third in MVP voting, was a silver slugger. I think Nats won the World Series that year. He hit 319. Had over a thousand OPS. I think he almost walked more than he struck out. 80 walks, 86 strikeouts, 44 doubles, 34 home runs, 126 RBIs, 175 hits, 74 hits, over 100 runs scored. And that's the kind of production you can get from him when healthy. But hasn't been healthy. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating. Someone who's was mentioning earlier, man, it's just a shame that the Angels have got guys like Mike Trout and Otani. They just can't get anything else right. Yeah, if something can go wrong for them, it will. I've heard just around town. And this might not be the answer for everything, but I've, I've just heard that Artie Moreno likes to spend on these like flashy free agents, but kind of doesn't really spend on anything else. I think there are, there are credible rumors that say that like, for example, in comparison, like the Dodgers front office is, uh, is like, Personnel-wise, two times the size of the Angels' front office. So Dodgers just have more people working for them. You know, whether it's assistants or coaches or more scouts and more assistants in the scouting department, data guys and gals. You know, just all that sort of stuff. You know, they invest into their medical staff, their training staff, their HR, their operations, all that sort of stuff to keep that keep the organization running as smooth as possible from top to bottom. Nice Wander Franco green, 18 out of 99. But, you know, if you don't have a strong structure, then you run into issues that they've had with, you know, with their medical staff distributing drugs to their players. You know, so I mean that's a whole that's a whole thing. I mean I don't know if more personnel would have helped, but I don't know. I mean that's that's something you know if that happened in any other in corporate America, you know any S and P five hundred company, imagine how massive that scandal would be. You know, so there you know, these are corporations. They've got to that's numbered. No, that's numbered. Forty one out of fifty. Speaking of the angels. So, sort of, uh, sort of frustrating to kind of see Mike Trout and Otani. They're not really seeing them in the playoffs. Yeah, Danny's right. At, at what point do the angels try to do something with Trout? I, I mean, I don't know if you could, with a player like Mike Trout, could you ever get 
you know, full value for who someone who will end up being one of the greatest players in baseball. Even if you had like, what if you got like 10 prospects? How many of those prospects on any given team, even the Dodgers, how many of those players are going to turn into Mike Trout? Yeah, Gabe saying maybe they're buying into the Angels in the outfield strategy. Yeah, prayer is all they really have at this point. Yeah, Manuel, there you go. Manuel is an Angels fan. Kind of frustrating to see. I'm a fan, though, but they need to build around the team instead of throwing at the, yeah, money at the next big name. I agree. Yeah, you won't get the best return, but if you're not going to win a series... But, but then it's a matter of, Danny, do you trust the Angels front office to make the right move for Mike Trout? That's the other thing. You know, you got to be... I mean... You got to be a a very confident GM and a very smart GM to be able to get the best deal for Mike Trout. Pretty ballsy too. If you're going to be if you're going to be trading the face of the franchise, face of baseball even, it's pretty bold. I mean, that's, that's what it is, Joe, right? They'd have to, for Trout, I mean, that's why he's almost untradeable. They'd have to bottom out a team's farm system and hope two or three players turn into like a Freddie Freeman or something like that. But is that going to happen? I mean, I'm trying to think, what would the best thing to do would try to be, would be trying to get, you would have to have a combination of a star, a ready-made star, and then prospect. So it would be like, and I don't know, the Rays would never do this, but you would trade Mike Trout for a young potential superstar in Wander Franco. Right, you get Wander Franco, and then five or six, you know, of their five of their top ten prospects or something like that. I mean, that's probably not realistic, but I mean, the Rays would never do it. Oh, Bobby Witt Jr. Wow, get some nice autographs out of here. Mark Bissett with the Royals. If you were him, you would want him to go to Seattle. I mean, that would be Julio Rodriguez. Logan Gilbert, George Kirby. <laughs> you, do you trade that for Cal Raleigh? Do you trade that for Mike Trout? Yeah, what's the formula for baseball if you have Trout no time? For football, I believe in drafting from the outside. Get your line and then draft a QB. Right. Well, the Angel problem has always been pitching, but they never seem to do that. They end up spending money on Anthony Rendon instead of like instead of investing in top-of-the-line pitchers. I mean, they've got the hitters. What made the Angels good in 2014, the last time they made the playoffs? I mean, they probably had better pitching. And they've always seemed to have traditionally some good, like, like back of the bullpen kind of guys. But the last few years, their bullpen has been terrible. I've I've seen them. I've seen them, you know, just just because they're on TV. You know what I mean? When they if they're in Seattle or something like that, they're one of the later games. So after the Dodger game's over, I'll flip over to like an Angels game, and they'll be up by three or four runs. And sure enough, inning seven, eight, nine, their bullpen will blow it. You know, Mariners will make some sort of crazy comeback in the ninth inning, and like they're usually like like they usually do, and then all of a sudden, six five Mariners, you know. So the back of the bullpen has been an issue.
Wouldn't mind having Trot come to Cleveland, but Cleveland doesn't have anyone they can trade. Yeah. Who, who would they have? To, I mean, they would have to trade Stephen Kwan, Jose Ramirez, Shane Bieber, etc., etc. Any exciting breaks lurking, not post, maybe for Thursday or Friday? I'll bet if we sold out more breaks today on the website currently, Eric Houston, all of a sudden, there might be some new stuff that appears. I think the Cup Hockey is coming out on Thursday. That's one we haven't posted pre-orders for yet, but allegedly, they've been pushing that for years now, but I guess since the new release day is Thursday, I, I, I guess if it was going to be pushed, they would, we, they would have told us by now. So, yeah, I think you like hockey, right, Eric? I think yeah, I've seen you buy into hockey, so I think... I think Joe Christian was interested in that too. And there'll just be some people who just don't even care about hockey, but they realize that the cup hockey can, you know, they'll play that as a high-end lottery ticket. So there should allegedly be the cup hockey there. It's a high-end flagship set. And remember, it's 2020, 2021 Upper Deck the Cup Hockey. That's how, that's the more recent years haven't even come out yet. What, Eric? Are you talking about the year? Yeah, 2020, 2021. Look, look, at, look up the uh, release calendar. It's insane. I agree, GT. No one player. Yeah, it's not like the NBA. You know, we're one. I, I'll use, I mean, you really do need a team everywhere, but but in any given day, there could be one one. You know, it's just a, NBA basketball. It's a smaller roster, smaller rotation of players playing regularly, one person can just go off and, yeah, take over a game. One person could have a hot series and take over a playoff series. But, yeah, baseball, much like the NFL, it's not just one player. One player cannot carry a team. You know, I mean, it's like the old cliche, defense wins championships, right? In, uh, in most sports, and that would be, for baseball, it would be... be Pitching, bullpen, closer. Torgelson for the Tigers, Stephen Carney. That's what that's what'll win championships in the end. And then just some timely hitting here and there. Patrick Wisdom to 75. It's a smart hit going to Mike and the Cubs. Freddie Freeman die cut. And Vidal Brujan to 99 for the Rays, Mark S. So Otani, Willie Castro, that might be to 10, I think. No, to 25. I feel like the colors are a little too similar on some of those. No ties to 50. Final box coming up. One person sitting out games, then playing the All-Star game can hurt an NBA team too. Yeah, uh, Danny was offered free Kraken tickets. But had my daughter and it was a school night, so you could take it. Yeah, it no, she, she doesn't want to go see the Kraken. Hockey's really fun live. Ah, oh, Gilo, we know. You're proud of your Chiefs. G Gabe trying to shoehorn in some Mahomes talk. And there's exceptions to rules, of course. 
Yeah, single most dominant game changing postseason player ever would be Mariano Rivera, yeah. What's his what's his save rate in the postseason? You think it's like ninety nine percent? There was that Diamondbacks incident. <laughs> oh, she's seven. Okay. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of no, maybe not. I'm trying to think when I when I really got into sports. So that had to be like when do most kids like kind of really get into it? Seven's a little young, I think. Nine, nine or ten. I like having the lip of the pack on that side. I don't like when it's flipped around the other way. <laughs> that just doesn't work. You're 12 or 13 because of Madden video games. Yeah, I feel like that's right. Late elementary, middle school is when you kind of really start getting into it. Austin, has any baseball breaks been moving? Yeah, we're doing one right now, obviously. So yeah, it has been. We did a, we did we did some other baseball breaks earlier today too. We did finest baseball a little while ago, so they have been moving. It's Andrew McCutcheon to seventy five. Mariano's ERA was 0.7 in 96 playoff appearances. That's crazy. It was Josiah Gray to 50 and Spencer Torkelson. Ooh, there you go. You did get her set of golf clubs for her birthday last month. She loves them so far. That's awesome. Maybe we'll... Uh, maybe that pays for the college, Danny. She gets a golf scholarship. <laughs> Right? Ends up on the LPGA. There's Otani to 50. It's crazy. Like, I'll go to the driving range and like there'll be like little kids that are out there with their parents who are like cl clearly like under 10 years old. And, and like for kids, they're like, their bodies are just so like, like rubber bandy. You know what I mean? And so these kids are just like whip their their hips around and then they're sma they're like driving balls further than me. It's crazy. There's you Darvish ninety nine and Shaman Naya to fifteen. Half of them probably do probably hit better than their parents. Bryce Harper, DJ LeMayhew, DJ LeMayhew in the mix. That goes to Ed and the Yankees. And we got Mookie Betts, Riding Low insert. We got Lindor, Julio Rodriguez, Ernie Clement, and Fernando Tatis Jr. And that, my friends, is that not uh, not a bad break at all? I think there was maybe a couple more autographs than I feel like I feel like we usually get out of a case of uh, of Ben Baller. The autographs are not you know a super common thing, but some nice ones: Bobby Witt Jr., C.J. Abrams, Mackenzie Gore. Right, that's not bad. Those three are not bad at all. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.